Fantasy football royalty, superstar, George Kittle. How we doing? Accomplished singer now. I'm getting there. Obviously. <laughs> any demo, record deals? Have you any record deals come through since last I night? I have some demos I'm going to release on SoundCloud <laughs> later. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. We will link to your SoundCloud when we uh, release the clip of this. All right. So the force of nature that is George Kittle is joining us here on the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. Great season. Congratulations on this. 11 touchdowns this season. That mm. is a career high. Um, you finished as the number two tight end in fantasy on a points per game basis. It's your fifth straight season finishing as a top four fantasy tight end. I know you don't mm. care about that. You care about helping the Niners win. But for, sure. for our purposes as well, we, we're rooting for the Niners, but we're also rooting for George Kittle specifically. I appreciate that. Uh, I'll start there. Of your 11 touchdowns, seven of them came with Brock Purdy under center. Talk yeah. to me about what the connection you and Brock had. Um, you know, I think um, the success I've found, like the, my best like receiving yard games was either with Jimmy G when he started 16 straight games yep. in 2019 or in like 2018 when I set a record that Travis broke, but was C.J. Beathard and Nick Mullins, both young quarterbacks. I was a young tight end, but they feed their tight ends just because right. it's a safety blanket. It's the easiest throw most of the time, right? Most of the receiver routes, like some of those are kind of deep and off. I'm doing like some chip stuff where I'm just kind of hanging out like the five to six yard area. And so I think Brock did a fantastic job of, he was very good of going through his reads. And if something wasn't there, if a, like if a defensive end came up, he was always good at just finding me late. And you see, you see a lot of his touchdowns that he threw to me where he would be scrambling and just kind of see something and dump it to me late because he's really good at keeping his eyes up. So. His mobility is a factor that really helped out all of us, really, because we've never played with a quarterback that could move like that. Like just his quickness, like he right. gets out to the, he can get outside the defensive end and have the whole edge by himself for three or four seconds, and guarding someone for seven to eight seconds is really hard in the NFL. So that's where those openings come in. Yep, George. I know you talk a lot about football. I don't really want to talk about football. I want to talk what? about hair. I want so, to talk about hair, because we were watching the NFL on his well, last night. Well, by the way, and, and so. you understand the reason he wants to talk about hair, to, to screw with me, because no, I you, have none. You're beautiful. I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. I love you. But yes, I'm, I'm massively jealous yeah. of your beautiful locks. I will, I'm not going to cut it, because I'm scared it won't grow back. That happened to Robbie Gold. Robbie Gold shaved his head for a charity thing yeah. and never grew back. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, boy. Yeah. I'm scared. I will say my, uh, my friend and former colleague, Tim Hasselbeck, was like, listen, you, you got to fire it before it quits on you. So <laughs> I'm, I'm getting to about that point where I got to fire it. Yeah, you got to do what uh, LeBron did. You got to yeah. just you gotta buy the ball. Hey, my dad's been bald consciously for like 20 years. Now I don't know if he can still grow it anymore, but he's just been bald for like 20 years. Right. That's, That's a, a good look. We were I've... watching the NFL on us last night. We yep. were kind of just marveling at the crispness of the man bun. Thank just you. want to know, because I, I had a man bun briefly in uh, my younger youth in Australia, and it just didn't work at all. Mm. It was like a, a half Asian Australian kind of, it was like Val Kilmer in Heat. But like bad, like a really bad Val Kilmer and Heat. I, I don't know if that could be bad. <laughs> well, I made it bad. I, I did my job. But just want to know about your process, how you get it kind of so crisp. And my just wife. Talk me through that. My wife does it. She does it, it for you. Okay. Okay. Oh, for sure. Yeah, That's no. When I'm, when I'm working and I need to look really nice, I'm like, hey, honey, I need you over here, please. Right. I got, see, I'm, I'm always set with the bands. Yeah. There's two bands. You got to tie it up super tight, get it long like a ponytail, and then you wrap it like a, I'd like to do the ballerina bun. Yes. Can that, you do it now? It won't. I can. Yes. It just won't look as good. Okay. Yeah. It won't. And I'll I'll do it for you guys. But I'm looking at myself on screen, and my hair looks nice right now. It does look <laughs> it nice. Does look so like, and I listen, I'm a man that, who never has nice hair. So I don't yeah. want I don't want to put you in a bad spot. You don't so have any, you don't have any hair, but yeah. Or any hair. Yeah, <laughs> Who's your exactly. favorite Australian football player? Uh, Scott Pendlebury. Do you know like, Scott Pendlebury's work? I'm a big no. Collingwood Magpies fan. I'm a big Mick Schwisnowski fan. Okay, there you That's go. my guy. Yeah, He's yeah, my punter. I, like <laughs> I love. I have a 29-year-old punter who's in his third year. It's amazing. Like he was a 20. He was 27 as a rookie. It's like, what are you? Uh, what's right. his name? Nate? We no, Weeding. What's his name? Who was the Oklahoma State quarterback that came in? Like super. Old, like he was super old. Oh, Brandon Whedon. Whedon. Brandon Whedon. Yeah, yeah, yeah Brandon yeah, Whedon. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, took me yeah, a second. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. me of. I was like, I have a rookie that's older than right. I am. That's amazing. <laughs> that that is that is that's hilarious. Hey, we understand you're um, in addition to being an accomplished uh, singer Thank you. and uh, yeah. and tight end. We understand you're also like a massive WWE fan. Occasionally. Like, so you know, we're we're on Peacock. We're part of the NBC family, right? Um, yeah. And we we the WWE is a great partner of ours. I recently said I thought I would be a good manager. Ooh. Like I'm not, I'm not there yet. Like, but I could. I, like I think Paul I'd Hammond? be a pretty good manager. Any chance we ever see you in the ring? Would you be a manager? Could uh, I manage you if you ever got in the ring? I mean, so you're saying you'd be like Paul Heyman for yeah, like Brock exactly. Lesnar, Roman Reigns? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could pull that off too. You might like. I think you need to go the suit route. Like you need to get yes. a nice suit, some nice shoes. Uh, you just got to kind of yell into the mic. Sometimes I'm, I'm they don't need that. to understand you. You just right. got to yell really loud so you sound important. Uh, but I'm open to any opportunity. 
Uh, I mean, I love wrestling. I've been in the ring a couple times. Uh, WWE is one of my favorite organizations to work with. Uh, everything that they do is so top notch and they're just so incredible. So um, who knows? We'll see what happens. I'm going to play football as long as I possibly can because I love it so much. And uh, after that, we'll see what happens. All yeah. right. I love Fair that you're, you're a massive fan occasionally, which is kind of an interesting kind of juxtaposition. I like that. Uh, did you play any other sports growing up? Um, let's see. My favorite uh, other sport was probably soccer. Okay. I love soccer. Um, basketball is up there. I could not dribble to save my life. I only have a right <laughs> hand. No left-handed layups possible. Um, besides that, though, I think my favorite sport is either right now what I'm working on. I love hockey. Nashville Predators. Yeah. I live in Nashville. I go to so many yeah, hockey yeah. games. Uh, but what I'm getting into right now is curling. Wow. I'm, okay. about to, I'm joining a curling league in Nashville with a couple of my uh, NFL guys, and I'm going to try to see what I can do. There's uh, Mark, Mark Bolger has a curling club down there. <laughs> Oh, and Jer hilarious. Jaron Allen practices there. Okay. And so he's trying to go to the Olympics. And so I'm trying to, I'm just, I'm not trying to go to the Olympics yet. Right. But I'm going to get into this curling league because it sounds like a blast. By the way, that's a reality show. We should do that on Peacock. George Kittle's <laughs> attempt to make the Olympic <laughs> curling team. That's yeah. a reality show. That's unbelievable. Wait it's fun. Happen. Have you guys I ever bet. tried it? It's so fun. I've never fun. tried it, but I've, it's not I've seen it. It's not that hard. It seems difficult. No, it's it's not that hard. It's really not. You just don't yeah. fall over when you slide it. I understand. You're a professional athlete. Things that are things that are not hard for you are hard for us mortals. <laughs> You're um, right. That is true. That is true. <laughs> I mean, I'll give you that one. Uh, thanks. I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, hey, so we're a fantasy football show, so I'm curious. Have you ever played fantasy? Oh, yeah. Okay. So when I was actually a really young kid, um, I was probably like seven or eight, and this was like... This was like first or second fantasy football ever. Yeah. I thought I was so excited about the fantasy football draft because it was like a specific date. Someone else said it. And my dad was playing. He was just helped me. And uh, I thought you actually get to meet the players and draft them onto your football team <laughs> as a kid. I was like, this is going to be awesome. I get to meet all these cool players. I get to meet Brian Urlacher and all this stuff. That's not how it works. Right. Um, I did. I played all the way through college um, a little bit in the NFL. Um, I never draft myself, though. Um, now, why really? is that? That's interesting. You're the no. first player that play that has played fantasy that hasn't that hasn't drafted themselves. Um, because I all my friends draft me before I get the pick. Yeah. That's okay. okay. That makes sense. And like, I'm not gonna draft myself first if I have the first pick. Right. I don't draft it in tight end first, and like, it doesn't make sense unless you're picking Travis Kelsey, who gets 10 targets a game, because like he's gonna get 100 yards a game minimum. So that's a great pick. But other than that, like. That's not, my, that's not usually my first pick. I, would, I always pick Christian McCaffrey as my first pick because I think he's the best player in football, honestly. Do yeah. you trade for yourself? No, it's all right. And, like, again, I haven't played in about three years. Okay. Um, but early on in my career, I would always play. It was really fun. How, 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 how often does it come up in your, when fans come up to you and they, they talk to you? How often does... 99% of the time. <laughs> I bet I bet it does. Hey, you are here uh, with us courtesy of Old Spice. Talk to me about the partnership with Old Spice and why you decided to work with them. Um, well, it's an honor to work with Old Spice. They choose a select few guys that represent them in their swagger campaign. You get guys like Trey Lance, CeeDee Lamb, guys that certainly have swagger. Oh, my God. Oh, he caught it. Come on. Wow. How about that? That right? looked like Kittle Dallas. Got That's crazy. Two George Kittle Kittles. Esque. That's crazy. So yeah, Old Spice Swagger campaign. <laughs> wow, look at us up here. This was here before I even got here because you guys wanted it so bad. Um, but this is what it is. Hey, we're friends, right? Yeah. If I had something in my teeth, you would tell me. I would. Right? Because we're on TV, a lot of cameras, a lot of people around, a lot of viewers. thousand percent. We now, want you to look your best. But if, like, let's just say he smelled bad. Mm -hmm. Right. It's kind of hard to tell someone that because there's not much you can do about it. No, right? there's nothing. So no why cure. not just instead start your day with Old Spice? Be protected 24-7, smell great, be confident in yourself, and then you can take on the world, man. So let's just start with Old Spice Swagger. It's just a good idea. I like it. I Thank like you. it. Listen, and by the way, if you are if you, if you had a product that called <laughs> Old Spice Swagger and you're looking yeah. for a pitchman, who's better Who's better than, uh, who's better than George? All right, before we let you go, because I know there's a lot of places that want to talk to you, this weekend features two great tight ends in sure. Travis Kelsey and Dallas Goddard. Um, who do you think wins this game? You guys have played both these teams. So... Two things for you. One, I'm going to give the Christian McCaffrey answer. I hope they both lose. Okay, fair. <laughs> Love that. But my prediction for the game is this. It all depends on how the Eagles take away Travis Kelsey. I'm, if you watch the Chiefs the entire season, they go to Travis anytime it's a third down, anytime it's a second and long to convert the change, move the change, keep Patrick Mahomes on the field. Because when Mahomes is on the field, that's why we love everyone loves Patrick Mahomes. He's fantastic. He makes these plays. He extends things. He makes up throws as he goes, underhand, behind the back. He does crazy stuff. But Kelsey's the one that keeps him on the field all the time, right? Eagles, if they take him away like the Patriots do or like Tampa did in the first half of the Super Bowl a couple years ago, yeah. if they can do that, I think the Eagles have a chance to win. If Travis runs rampant, I think the Chiefs are going to win by two touchdowns. 
Who do, what do you think happens? So make a pick. <laughs> I, I know you hope I, both I, of them I just lose. want to see the first drive and what I like. If I was a defensive coordinator, I would put an outside linebacker on the ball scr line of scrimmage wherever Travis is and have an average cover guy right behind him and just have them double team him the whole day and make anybody else on the roster beat me. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.